While few of us ever pay attention to them these days, the fact is that matches are one of the most revolutionary inventions of all time. Not only did they take away the excruciating task of starting a fire using flint or wood, but they're able to do it extremely cheaply. So let's take a look at how they're made. The Modern Safety Match Matchsticks are originally said to have been invented in the 5th century CE in China, but it wasn't until the 1800s that the modern self-lighting matchstick was invented. Nowadays, most matchsticks consist of three components, the wooden splint that allows you to hold the match, the combustive head on the splint, and the striking strip on the matchbox, which makes sure that unlike older matches, which would ignite upon any friction, these matches only burn when rubbed on the striking strip, making them more secure. So with that in mind, let's take a look at how all these things come together, starting with the match's most core component, the combustion mixture. The chemical mixture at the end of the matchstick is by far the most important component in the working of a matchstick, which is especially impressive considering the fact that it is made up of only a few simple components. It all happened in a large industrial mixer where a worker manually adds gelatin capsules over some potassium chlorate. Gelatin is an organic substance that's used in everything from medicinal capsules to marshmallows to give them flexibility while also dissolving all their other components. Here, it plays the same role, giving the chemicals something to bind to while also helping them stick to the splint. As for potassium chlorate, it is the chemical that combusts upon friction. Besides these two, workers add water to the sides of the mixer, both to rinse them and also to keep the thick mixture liquid enough to be used. And once the gelatin has dissolved all the potassium chlorate, the worker adds some additional additives, like silica granules, which control the combustion by slowing it down, some coloring agents, which help distinguish between burnt and unburnt matchsticks, as well as some other chemicals to help with clean burning. And after about 40 minutes of continuous mixing, the mixture is finally ready for the splints. Speaking of the splints, let's talk about how they're made. Splints. Now, splints are made separately from the matchsticks and are usually brought in from another factory where they were made by cutting down a few millimeter sheets of aspen wood called veneers into tiny little sticks. Aspen is chosen because of its cheap and light nature, as well as its low moisture content, which would interfere with burning. And as an additional precaution, once the wood has been brought into the matchstick factory, it too is impregnated with chemicals like ammonium phosphate, which prevents afterglow, as well as some kinds of paraffin, which makes sure the stick burns evenly and slowly. Once chemically induced and dried, the sticks are dumped onto perforated plates that transport the splits down the line, while also shaking off any residue or small pieces. The clean and uniformly sized splints then make their way up a conveyor belt, which is regularly shaken to keep all the splints facing the same direction. They then make their way to a machine that gets rid of any final imperfect pieces, after which they're finally made ready to be dipped into the combustion mixture. For this, they are distributed over a long vibrating plate, which distributes them evenly and gives them to an automatic feeder, which inserts the sticks into the sockets of a matchstick conveyor belt, which takes the now separated and upright sticks to the next situation, dipping. Here, the conveyor belt brings the splints over a vat of continuously mixing combustion mixture. It is kept mixing to prevent it from solidifying, once the splints are in place, a press dips the entire belt into the mixture, depositing the splint heads with a perfect little drop of thick combustion mixture. After this, they're allowed to drip the excess mixture back down for about five seconds, and once the amount is deemed correct, they make their way ahead the line while another set of splints takes their place. The completed splints then travel across the same conveyor belt in a dry room running in circles for about an hour. This is to completely dry off and solidify the mixture, as otherwise, even the slightest amount of water may make the match unusable, or worse, may cause an unwanted chemical reaction. But once the matches have dried for the hour, they can finally make their way to packaging. Now, unlike other things that are packaged in simple boxes from out of the factory, match boxes are as much a part of the product as the match sticks. So let's talk about those. 
matchboxes. Now, while they may look like they're made from simple scrap board paper, matchbox paper has to be treated a little more carefully. For this, the driest strip of board paper are brought into the factory and are then pressed between two rollers before they're being passed under a hot iron. All these steps are to draw out as much moisture as possible because they could damage the matchsticks and compromise their safety. And once done, this leaves the cardboard with a moisture content of less than 5%, which means that it can now make its way to the next stations. First, a die cutter cuts the board into the shape of the inner matchbox. Then, industrial folders laced with glue fold the cut pieces as they travel along. And since the process is fully automated, a single station is able to produce more than 55,000 of these inner boxes in a single hour, which, once complete, are kept in storage bins until required. Now, while all this is happening, another station works on the outer sleeves. These are made from pre-cut board paper pieces that have been printed with the company's logo. A worker then places these pieces into an automatic die cutter and folder, which once again pushes out thousands of these sleeves in just a few minutes. But before they leave the machine, another important bit of matchstick equation has to be added the striking strip. These can be pasted onto the box or printed directly and consist of crushed glass for friction, phosphorus to complete the chemical reaction, as well as an adhesive gum, Arabic, for strength and gluing. In this factory, the adhesive is first printed in a pattern on separate strips of board paper, and then the chemical mixture is dusted on it. This chemical dust attaches to the parts painted with glue while it falls off the rest creating the signature thread that you see on the side of your matchbox. Once dried and solid, these strips are then brought into the die cutting machine where they are glued onto the form sleeves, completing the outer casings of the matchbox, which are also collected in a bin. And with all the individual parts complete, we can finally move on to the last step on the list. Assembly and Packaging here, the completed and dried matchsticks are first pushed out from the conveyor belt into a regular conveyor below. This conveyor is shaken at a specific incline and rate, making sure that all the matches are aligned in a similar fashion. Further down the line, the bins of the inner boxes and their sleeves are also emptied onto their respective conveyor belts, which makes their way onto a filer that puts the haphazard boxes into single vials. These files are brought in parallel to each other while the matchsticks travel above until they reach an automatic filler that deposits a specified number of matchsticks into the inner boxes. A machine then vibrates these boxes to shake off any excess matchsticks before another machine pushes these into the sleeves, completing the matchbox. All in all, the station can process over 500 boxes a minute while also handling nearly 200 matchsticks every second. Finally, the completed boxes make their way down the packaging line where they are also sorted into piles to be sold off to millions of people around the world. Click on one of these two videos on your screen right now. We'll catch you guys in the next one.